The White Bear Area Chamber of Commerce and SCC-TV are proud to present Your Business Matters, dedicated to your business needs. The White Bear Area Chamber is a nonprofit business organization serving as advocates to the White Bear Area and its business community. Now, here's the Executive Director of the White Bear Area Chamber and the host of Your Business Matters, Tom Snell. Welcome to Your Business Matters, brought to you by the White Bear Area Chamber of Commerce. Each month, we interview community leaders and local business owners so you can be informed about the developments in our community. I am pleased to welcome Shannon Peterson, the director of the Lakes International Language Academy. Shannon oversees one of the most successful charter schools in Minnesota. They're located in Forest Lake. They specialize in Spanish and Mandarin immersion programs. In addition, they have a fully established international baccalaureate program, which we will discuss later in the interview. We will address the importance of this school to the overall importance in places, both in business community and our overall citizens in White Bear area. Shannon, thank you for joining me today. And the first question that I have for you is, can you explain uh, why the International uh, Lakes Academy, uh, International Language Academy, uh, is uh, such an important asset to the uh, area that you serve. Yeah, um, we were uh, started by a group of parents who were all interested in having this kind of a school available to our own children. And why? Why? What? What do you mean by this type of school? <laughs> we wanted, compared to what existed yeah, yeah. prior. Well, uh, the schools that had been in existence already uh, were, were great. They were fine schools. Sure. Um, but we did want our children to have the opportunity to become more um, internationally minded, and we wanted them to be bilingual for sure. Uh huh. And the best way to do that is to start early with the language. And um, at our school, the students in kindergarten start. 100% um, of their kindergarten day and all the way through elementary school, they, they do in Spanish or in Mandarin. And mm -hmm. by doing that, they get all the subject matter that they normally would in any elementary school. So they, they miss nothing, but they also gain that second language. So, and uh, when you say they start in kindergarten, then does this mm -hmm. go all the way through high school or does it yes. stop at a certain grade yeah. level? We've recently, the last few years, we've added um, all the way through high school now. Um, uh -huh. the, the full day of immersion um, is really kindergarten first and second. Uh -huh. and, then, and then in the middle of second grade, we add um, about an hour a day of English for the rest of elementary school. And then in 6 through 12, the students have the opportunity to continue taking one, two, or three classes right. in that target language. Yeah but most of the classes in the upper school and the secondary yeah. are, are in English. I, I know in, in a mm -hmm. lot of the other uh, traditional public schools, they'll have language programs, and right. typically uh, students start taking a foreign language, if they take a foreign language, yeah. usually in high school. Right. You know, and they'll start in ninth or 10th grade and then mm -hmm. go until they graduate. Why start uh, students in a foreign language right away in kindergarten? Um, I guess mostly it's um, efficiency and just being able to to uh, gain that language without wasting any time. They don't have to decide between language and art or language and music like uh -huh. they do in high school or, or even middle school. In the elementary school, they just do everything in that language, and so it's efficient. Do you, do you find that that's, yeah, that students can absorb more when they're younger than maybe when yeah. they're older? It's it's the only way they know how to go to school. So um, it's, it's without thought and they, they pick it up. The teachers have to be aware of you know, what they're mm -hmm. learning and, and help correct their grammar and so on, but um, it's, it's fairly effortless on the part of the students. Mm -hmm. I see also that you're mm -hmm. uh, studying something called International Baccalaureate. And right. what is mm -hmm. International Baccalaureate? I'm glad you asked. The International Baccalaureate is um, a way of educating students that, that really focuses on the whole child, not only helping kids to become um, you know, good academically or, or develop 
cognitively, but also to develop um, into internationally minded world citizens. And so they're, they're concerned that international baccalaureate takes best practices from around the world um, and in education and puts them all together in this kind of a messy program, but it works really well to help kids develop their minds and their, um, to, be, to be good human beings. They learn how to, um, you know, take a test, of course, we have to do that here. Yeah. But also, um, they learn how to be a good friend and how to make friends and keep mm -hmm. friends and solve problems. And I, and, I, and I don't want to get too much into the weeds with this, but, <laughs> okay. but uh, in explaining that, um, mm -hmm. Some school students or schools, excuse me, offer programs in where, uh, you know, like maybe college prep programs or mm -hmm. programs for students that are going into uh, a higher education level yeah. after they get out of high school. Mm -hmm. And you, what you explained to me about international baccalaureate is it helps students get more acquainted with what's going on in their surrounding yeah. community and world. Yeah. Uh, but you didn't say anything about does it academically. Is, it, is yeah. it an important academic program beyond just getting students aware of what's going on in the world around them? Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, when it comes to the high school grades, the diploma program is actually quite a rigorous um, academic program and they have external exams and so it's it's um, monitored worldwide. It's the same yep. high stakes exam um, for every subject and well recognized and respected worldwide um, by universities. So often in the United States and, and abroad, students can come into universities with college credits for having earned their IB diploma. See, uh, you know, you read about where the United States is when you look at uh, a list of other countries, basically yep. in Europe and maybe Japan, mm -hmm. China, Singapore, and the United States is down on that list quite a ways when you look at mm -hmm. language skills and mathematics. So uh -huh. does this international baccalaureate program that you just explained, mm -hmm. is, it, is it linked at all so that students maybe that are studying in, in Switzerland, for example. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we would have the same type of academic standards that use that program as some of these other countries that have, that seem to test higher for yeah. students. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because that's exactly the case. The, the exams are worldwide, so if our students are doing well on the IB exams, then um, that means that they are doing well on, a, on an international um, scale, not just in the United States or in Minnesota. And, and so if a student might be looking to go to a, a four-year college, for example, yeah. then going through an IB program would be something that could be valuable. Very valuable. Um, uh, universities love them. Uh, the, the kids who come out of the IB pro programs, are they're, um, they ask deep questions and they want to uh, really dive into a subject. They're mm -hmm. not just looking for memorizing surface facts. They're, yep. they're, mm -hmm. yeah. they're great students. Well, that's interesting mm -hmm. uh, to know. And now I wanted to, to bring that just a little bit further. You mentioned too about not only the International Baccalaureate program, but the program where you have these immersion programs going all the way through kindergarten yeah. through graduation. Yeah. Are you one of the only schools in the area that offers that? Um, yeah, in this area we are one of the one of the only schools, certainly one of the only ones with um, both IB and uh, language immersion all the way through. Um, there are several elementary uh, level immersion programs in the state of Minnesota and um, more all the time because it is such a great idea and um, people have seen it work and they want to have it in their community. How about in the greater White Bear uh, area? In the greater White Bear area there are there are a few just okay. just a few and and mostly elementary. But so, so you don't you don't start in kindergarten and go through uh, the 12th right. grade or something. Right. So mm -hmm. now you're what they call a charter school. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, first question is is this a public or a private school? What Being a charter school, yeah. what does that mean? Being a charter school means that we are a public school, but that we have a, a, a specific charter or a specific um, agreement with the state of Minnesota to offer a specific kind of education. Every charter school is started for a reason, so to fulfill one mm -hmm. of six purposes in the law. 
And um, ours is to educate kids using language immersion and um, the IB. Uh, is there tuition? There is no tuition. Okay, so anybody can apply. Anybody can apply and we can have no um, uh, requirements for entry. So anybody has an equal chance. Our lottery okay. is January 15th. Oh, okay, all mm -hmm. right. You mentioned lottery. Yeah. Okay, so just you have to pull a name out of a hat and they're the ones that get in. <laughs> That's exactly uh, what we And you we mentioned do. <laughs> lottery. Does this mean yeah. that you've got more students or more students that want to get in than you have room? Yeah, um, in kindergarten especially, in, in an immersion program, you want to start in kindergarten. Right. Because by the time you're in first grade, the kids are fluent, the teachers are speaking 100% Spanish or Mandarin, and it, it's hard to jump in um, late. But in kindergarten, we always have more applicants on the first on, on January 15th than um, spaces, so there there is a lottery. So you really have to get in that first year. You, yeah, or ideally, ideally, years. yeah, yeah. Sometimes yeah. people will slide in in grade grade one, but it's yeah. it's a challenge. So if you've got uh, mm -hmm. basically uh, the number of students that you have, do you have like two students for every opening or one and a half students no, for every opening? No, it, it's or? It, not so many, but but always more students than openings. Not, not, well, it's not two to one yet. But that's good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Well, I also wanted to find out, mm -hmm. ask you, uh, uh, digressing just a little bit about uh, students when they graduate, when they yeah. leave, when they leave your school, what are some of the career options that they might look at? So if I'm a parent, I want my student mm -hmm. to start in kindergarten, go all the way through, what are some of the things that, uh, that my student might be looking to do as far as in, in, in a career role? Yeah. Well, a lot of our students, are, well, it, it's hard to say right now because we've had very few actually graduate from our K-12 program. We have had kids go all the way through and are that age, but we just recently added the high school. So Right. Yeah, okay. All right. Hard to know, but, but yeah. I happen to have a couple of my own kids who went through our program through sixth grade and then um, went through another uh, uh, cooperative program we'd, right. we'd set up. And they and all of their friends, I know what they're doing. So they're going into business. They're going into the medical field where a second language is really handy. They're going into, um, uh, I, I just met, ran into an, another graduate who uh, is majoring in Spanish and now she's going to go back to law school. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the uh, another language is is a benefit to whatever career you decide Even, to uh, you pursue. You mentioned medical. Why medical? Yeah. Um, well, there are <laughs> people all over the United States right. who, yeah, you know, yeah, when yeah. they can maybe they speak English, but when it's an yep. emergency, they want to be in their home language, their first language. Okay. You know, yeah. Another uh, issue that keeps popping up, and I'm sure that you've heard of it, is mm -hmm. based on workforce. Yeah. There is a lack of employees at every level, yeah. from PhDs down mm -hmm. to students that might just be graduating yeah. from high school. And uh, what you indicated was the value mm -hmm. of students learning this second language. Yeah. You hire teachers. Mm -hmm. First of all, is it challenging to find a public school teacher that is looking for a job that's fluent in Mandarin. Yes, it is very challenging to find um, people who are excellent teachers, which is important, and also fluent in Mandarin, which is equally important. They, now, mm -hmm. uh, based on that fact, uh, are there state requirements that make it challenging uh, to hire teachers maybe that have these skill sets that you can't find mm -hmm. that come out of a traditional uh, education background. Yeah, uh, um, it's it's mostly that. Um, well, the we've been working with the Minnesota Department of Education. All of the um, language immersion schools ha are facing a similar problem. Charter schools might be facing a little bit more problem because we've got a little uh, less sure. funding to work with. Yep, but. Um, the, there's the MDE, and they're um, trying to help us get people licensed in uh, different methods or trying to figure out how to accept international 
um, degrees and yeah. get those kids or those teachers licensed. But the bigger problem right now has become uh, getting visas, even for those teachers from other countries who are willing to come. I, wanna, I was going to ask you about that because uh -huh. I heard a. Uh, Actually, I heard a, a radio broadcast uh -huh. uh, that focused on your school. Oh, okay, back, that was uh, a while, while ago. ago. Yeah, yeah, and uh -huh. uh, the uh, information that came out is uh, challenges based on on the new, new rules for visas. Yeah, yeah. Is that an issue? It is an issue. Um, We've got 175 employees. We're getting to be a, a, one of the larger employers in Forest Lake right now. But um, the um, so only maybe 30 of our teachers are are on some kind of a visa. But um, every one of them in the past mm, year and a half or so has had their visa. Whereas we used to just follow a process and. You know, we know we're hiring people who are qualified to get the mm -hmm. visa. It used to just be a process of paying and waiting, and now it's a process of paying and waiting and then getting a request for more evidence and then sending in that evidence and then maybe paying for an extension. It's just getting to be more and more cumbersome. So it's cumbersome uh, venue mm -hmm. to go through in order to make sure that you're able to yeah. to keep your teachers. Yeah. And is this an issue then with... Uh, immersion programs maybe throughout uh, the state of Minnesota, maybe not Spanish, but for, uh, for Mandarin. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, it, for us, it's for both Spanish and Mandarin. Oh, Spanish too. Yeah, because most of the immersion programs in the state of Minnesota are Spanish immersion. And yes. so those teachers are in more demand. So there are more of them, but there's yeah. more demand for them as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now uh, I want to, again, bring up a few things again about charter schools. And yeah. you're a... You are a charter school. Yeah. You're a public school, but you're yes. different than a regular public school. Right. And we went through some of those things, but um, you, do you have an elected school board, or how does it, how do you yeah. operate that might be a little different than the school district in Forest Lake? Right. Um, we have a school board, and uh, by law, uh, several years ago, Minnesota decided that the school board had to be teacher majority. Um, that law has changed, but ours still is at this point a teacher majority. So we've got five teachers, three parents, and one unrelated community member. Oh, okay. So they're elected, but elected by the school community. Got, okay, wonderful. Mm -hmm. So that's how it, so that gives an opportunity to be a little bit more innovative and creative yeah. in how you mm -hmm. approach things with teachers really taking a, a real key role in right. determining how the school is going to, right. going to operate. Mm -hmm. And how long have you been around? We have been around since 2004. Oh, okay. That's uh, quite a while. And I would yeah. imagine that you were one of the first I immersion was. schools yeah. in the state. Oh, yes. Yeah. At that time. Um, there were probably 10 or 12 at, at that time. And now there are probably, I don't know, close to, if not over 100. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly Wonderful. just, like I said, elementary. But Do you, have just as, do you get mm -hmm. just as much money as a, a traditional public school? <laughs> Unfortunately, no, we, we don't. We get the basic uh, formula for general education. Uh, we don't get any levy money. We don't get any, you know, uh, health and safety dollars. There are a lot of different funds that. So you have to be lean and mean. Yeah. <laughs> and I use that term, but you have to be lean. And yes. you do have a you do have an event, a fundraiser each year where you we have a, a gala, right? Yes. Yes, we do. So students, if they want to, and by the way, uh, mm -hmm. they can check that out on our chamber webpage. That would that, be great. Uh, uh, when, you, when you have your next uh, gala. Thank so, you, Tom. That'll be in April, yeah. Right. Okay. Uh -huh. It's a ways away, but yeah. we'll make sure it gets in. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the other, uh, the, finally, mm -hmm. I want to know if parents are interested yes. in finding out more about your school, yeah. how do they go about doing that? We have several uh, parent information sessions uh, during the day if you want to see the school in action or in the evening if the daytime ones are inconvenient. We also have a, a really uh, full website of, of information. Um, parents can call me. They can talk to the principals at the upper or the lower school. Um, we, we are, we've got a lot, of, a lot of space in the upper grades right now because yep. we just added them. And kindergarten lottery is gearing up for, okay. for January 15th. 
And your uh, your website is www.mylila m y l i l a dot org. And uh, mm -hmm. phone number or general phone number? General phone number is six five one four six four zero seven seven one. Okay. So. Thank you. Thank you, Shannon, for uh, joining me today. Now I have a quick announcement about an important chamber and community happening. Scheduled for this month on November 13th, the White Bear Area Chamber of Commerce will hold its annual legislative reception at Tria Restaurant in North Oaks. The event is free to attend. Appetizers will be served along with a cash bar. For more information, visit our website, www.whitebearchamber.com. I'm Tom Snell, and thank you for watching Your Business Matters. You've been watching Your Business Matters. For more information on this program or the White Bear Area Chamber, visit whitebearchamber.com or call 651-429-8593.